Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to welcome you to this um, Black History Month program. It is the Blacks, Black Americans in Congress briefing and discussion, and I think this is an outstanding way to start the morning, so we're going to begin. My name is Adrena Eiffel, and I am the project director of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's A Voice Virtual Library Project. A Voice African American Voices in Congress is a long-standing project of the CBCF that chronicles legislative accomplishments of African Americans in Congress and the impact on shaping democracy in America. The website www.avoiceonline.org is an educational resource which helps cultivate public discourse and scholarship on African American leadership in representative government and promotes civic engagement among youth. I'm honored to be your moderator for today's event. Today we will hear from the House historian Matt Wozniewski and the um, lead editor of the book Black Americans in Congress, another fantastic resource. Later we will hear from former Congressman Ronald Dellums who will be introduced hopefully by Representative Barbara Lee. At this time, please welcome our, the sponsor of our, breeding, of our briefing, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson, who represents Florida's 17th Congressional District. A lifelong educator, Congresswoman Wilson, before coming to Congress, served as a principal, a school board member, Florida State House Representative, and a Florida State Senator. This is her freshman term in Congress. Congresswoman. Wow, thank you so much, Adrena. And thank you, Matt, for being here with us today. And thanks to all of you for coming out to share this with us. History is so important. And this is the beginning of Black History Month. And in Florida, I served as the coordinator for African American history in the entire state and was responsible for placing in the textbooks of history black history. In fact, Congresswoman Carrie Meek, Congresswoman Brown, and Congressman Alcee Hastings are in the, tech, the uh, fourth grade textbooks of Florida when we study the state as being elected. So I'm very happy to say also I serve as the uh, chairman of black history for the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I have a whole segment of the community that is interested in making sure that everyone learns African American history as they come through the public schools. So we meet quarterly, we give suggestions to the African American History Task Force and make sure that that goal is met. So today we continue that legacy. And I want to thank Keenan and all of the interns and my office for all that they have done, especially pu pulling this together, thanking C-SPAN for coming out to cover us today. As we move along, we expect more people to come. They have just called votes. I'm going to vote. I only have two votes, and I will be back to enjoy this wonderful, rich session. I see our great honoree is here this morning. And uh, let's give him a hand and just as he enters the door. <laughs> we're so pleased. This is just a great day in Washington. It's a great day on Capitol Hill, and it's a great day for our nation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congresswoman. And now please welcome Matt Wozniewski. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Wilson, for arranging this uh, opportunity to discuss uh, Black History Month with you, and in particular, the uh, history of African Americans in Congress. Uh, so many changes have occurred in this storyline in the recent past by historical standards um, that it really is, it's been an amazing amount of change, and certainly within the lifetimes of those of us in this room. There's been tremendous change in this story. I'd like to throw two statistics at you to point this out. The first is that there have been 126 African Americans who have served in our institution, the House of Representatives. 
there have been six other individuals who've served in that other body on the north side of the building, the Senate, okay? No African-American individual has ever served in both chambers. So if you add them up, that's 132 people. And as a portion of Congress, all the members of Congress, going back to 1789 to the first federal Congress, that accounts for about 1% of all the people who've ever served in the House and the Senate. Now, to demonstrate how this change has occurred very quickly in recent years, consider this. As African Americans, uh, as many African Americans have been elected to Congress since 1990, as were elected in the entire period between 1870 and 1990. From 1870, the first African Americans, Hiram Revels, a senator from Mississippi, Joseph Rainey uh, the, from South Carolina, a member in the House. So that's a tremendous amount of change. And what I'd like to do today is to help you better understand some of the earlier context to this story. Representative Dellums certainly is an authority on what's happened in the modern era. So what I'd like to do is prepare you for his talk by uh, talking about some of the pioneers, some of the early representatives and senators who came along and made the changes that have happened in our lifetimes possible. And to do that, I want to refer to uh, a publication uh, which uh, we published in 2008, Black Americans in Congress. We're going to use uh, our website behind me to illustrate that. Aaron Ramada from our office is going to drive the bus on that and uh, highlight some of the individuals I'll be mentioning. Uh, this book was published in 2008. The website features some things not available in the book. Lesson plans for teachers, uh, a gallery of art and artifacts that weren't in the book, and it's also updated regularly. So I'd recommend it to anyone who'd like to learn more about the history. I am just going to be skimming the surface today. Uh, it's at baic.house.gov. And it's formatted in a chronological manner where we break African American history on Capitol Hill into four long generations. And we do that to provide context so that people can understand the elections in which these members came into Congress and also the environment in which they legislated in both the House and the Senate. So let me move to the first generation of African Americans who served during the Reconstruction period after the Civil War up until 1887. Reconstruction, of course, as you no doubt are familiar with, was the northern effort to reform the seceded uh, uh, southern governments, the former Confederate states, and integrate the South back into the Union. Now, historians typically date this between 1863, 1865, and, eight, and 1877, the formal end of Reconstruction. Now, during most of Reconstruction, in both the House and the Senate, a very influential group of individuals known as radical Republicans uh, really ran the legislative agenda in both chambers. And radicals tended to be former abolitionists who wanted to impose a much harsher version of reconstruction on the southern states than did Presidents Lincoln or Johnson. And radical leaders such as Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania, who was, was truly the leader of the House, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee and then the Appropriations Committee, and then Charles Sumner of Massachusetts, the great radical leader in the Senate, wanted this program of uh, Reconstruction to, in the end, create a multiracial society wherein newly freed African Americans would be integrated fully into the political process. Now, the very first African American in Congress was Hiram Revels, who I mentioned. He toured the nation after his term as a senator. Um, after the Mississippi legislature had appointed him in 1870. And when he took a, a long national speaking tour, newspapers referred to him as the 15th Amendment in flesh and blood, okay? This North Carolina-born preacher personified African-American emancipation and enfranchisement in the Civil War period. He occupied a Senate seat that had been held by a man named Albert Brown, who left the chamber in 1861 when the state seceded. And it was a very powerful, symbolic appointment. Brown was a former slaveholder, and here was Hiram Revels taking his seat less than a decade earlier. As Senator Henry Wilson of Massachusetts escorted Revels to the front of the chamber to take his oath on February 25, 1870, the Atlanta Constitution had a report.